Thanks for that, Steve. Um, my name's Rob Shaw. I'm here to talk about how to apply for an expiration release area. So I'll go through that. Um, as you know, we've, we've released a large sort of area of land in the far west of South Australia. So there's 14 areas in total as shown on the map there, totaling 12,000 square k's. They range in size from 600 to 1,200 square kilometres. Um, Recognising that it's a frontier area and, and the difficulties in the industry at the moment, we've, we've put up a minimum, or we've reduced our minimum expenditure commitment by 50% for the first two years, so as an incentive to apply for the areas, and, the, and applications will be open from 6th to the 10th of June for those areas. In terms of finding out information about the ERA areas, there's a number of ways you can do that. We've got our SARIG information portal which is the figure at the top there where you can look at look at where the ERAs are located download some information about sort of what we know about the area already um, the center of that SARIG page you can see that there's a um, there's a big box of, of a list of information so if you click on the what's new at the top of the SARIG page that'll that'll come up and that's actually a list of all the information we've got available for Coompana and how to obtain that information so that's pretty useful uh, the the bottom left figure there is a is a, is a picture of our, our web page where we've got the ERAs listed and as Steve mentioned we've got links to where we've got other information about the initiative uh, Bottom right there is, is a guideline applying for an expiration licence application. There are some copies over there, as Steve said, to, to take away. And really, most of what I put in this talk comes out of that document, so I encourage you to, to get, a, get hold of a copy of that document and use it if you're going to apply for an area. In terms of the application process, um, there are a few important things that you need to know. It has to be made during the application week. Um, if you're applying online, you can only submit the application during that week, but you can actually start the application before that and save it leading up to that time. It has to be for the whole ERA area. Um, the application must be accompanied by the fee and a plan of the area, which if, if you're applying online, you just need to tick a box to validate that it's the correct area that you're after. Um, and provide all the mandatory information as per the online application or within the, the form. And it must be lodged in a, sta in a standard format, which is either the online application through SARIG or the um, downloadable form, as you see on the right there, which is in a PDF or a um, Word document format from our website. Um, essentially, it's a three-step process. So when it comes into us, we need to assess whether it's a valid application. Uh, the things we take into account there is, is it, is it been lodged within the application period? Is it within the correct format? Has the fee been paid? Do we have all the mandatory information? Uh, something that often gets missed is that, that we need to see um, independent evidence that you've got the financial capability to meet the proposed program and we need that to be less than six months old. So remember that when you're applying. Um, if there's more than one application, it will go to a panel assessment where we have geologists from the Geological Survey and from our regulatory area, which will independently assess the applications. Then we come together to make a final recommendation on that. Um, if it's a single application, it just goes into our normal ELA process. If there's no applications, it'll go to vacant land. So that's the process there. Um, step three is once we've determined if the application is successful, we'll, we'll notify you of that. And then the application goes into our standard ELA processing procedure. In terms of assessment, there are a number of categories that we look at, which is detailed in the um, guideline document. Uh, exploration target and geological model. So there we're really looking for you to show us that you understand the geological context of the area that you're in. You've had a look at what data is available. You've had a look at previous exploration and you've come up with a, a logical and reasonable model for, for that geology. Uh, proposed two year program. So we want to see a, um, a sort of clear and logical and well thought out program to, to test the model that you've come up with. Uh, financial capability. 
it's really just a yes or no assessment there. There's no scoring of that. We just want to know that you, you've shown us that there's independent sort of evidence that you've got the ability to fund the program that you've proposed. Uh, technical operational capability, that's about you showing us you've got the, the capabilities to, um, to run the program in an effective and efficient manner. Uh, South Australian licences and applications, we do take into account if you've got projects nearby to areas where you're applying, which isn't so much of, of a consideration here because there's not really much around the areas we're releasing here. Um, so that's that one. Um, past performance, regulatory compliance, we do consider if there's been some non-compliances in the past, um, going back only five years, you know, that, that gets taken into account in the assessment as well. And also, um, for some areas, there's, there are specific criteria which we nominate um, that we want you to address if there's areas of sensitivity or something like that. So for this area, all of these areas occur in the Nullarbor Regional Reserve. But um, just to let you know, the adjoining Yellowbinna Regional Reserve, Reserve hosts the Jacinth Ambrosia Mine. It hosts active exploration by Iluka. Western Areas, Dore and other companies. So we've got a pretty streamlined process for um, approving and supporting exploration in the regional reserves, which is a multiple use land classification. So they're the, they're the key category areas. Within our guideline, you'll see under each of those, we've got two or three dot points, which are specific things that we, we look at assessing in those areas. So I encourage you to use that as a bit of a checklist when you putting your application together because they're the actual things that we're considering when we're scoring your application. Um, a few application tips. I encourage you to use the online SARIG application. If you're a company that's already here, it'll pre-populate with data from detailing your tenements and your, your details. So that, that's pretty helpful. And yeah, it automates quite a few things that will help you through the process. As I said, you can start the application early before the application week. So I encourage you to do that. Go in, make a start. You know, if you've got questions in the process, ring us up through that preparation period before you need to submit. Um, often it's useful to, um, if you've got a reasonable amount of information to put with the application, maybe put that in an attachment that you can, like, put it together in a Word document, something like that, you can attach that through SARIG. Um, and as I said before, ensure you've got independent evidence of financial capability. That's pretty important because if that's not there, the, the application is not valid and you won't go into any competing process. Um, our assessment is purely based on the information that you provide in the application. So don't assume that we, just because you might have worked here for a while, that we, that we will sort of think, know who you are and what you're capable of, which some sort of, I think, has happened a bit in the past. So just remember that we're only focusing on the information which comes in in the application. Uh, as I said, use the specific criteria to be assessed in the guideline as a bit of a checklist when you're preparing it, and that'll give you the best chance of success. And yeah, don't forget to address the specific criteria in section I of the application. In SARIG, that will come up automatically if, if it applies. If you're not applying through SARIG, you'll need to go on our web page um, to the public notices page to find out what that criteria is for each area. Um, one other thing, if you're applying on SARIG, we've offered a 50% discount on the minimum expenditure. Our system isn't really set up for that. There's a rule there saying that if you don't, if your program doesn't meet the minimum, you can't get past that point. You'll get red errors coming up, that sort of thing. So what you'll need to do there, if you do want to put in a program less than the, the standard commitment, you'll need, to sort of, you'll need to just fill out the box to meet the commitment where the, where the expenditure is and, and below just nominate any activity, put in the minimum, sort of standard minimum commitment as well. But put your actual program in an attachment, tell us you've done that in that information box there, then we'll know to disregard the other information, just take the, um, the proposal you've put in your um, attachment. I think that's all from me. So if, if you've got any questions about the ERA process, 
while you're preparing your application or, or afterwards today. I'm happy to take questions about that. Anything about SARIG, Christy Gerard is our SARIG manager and geoscience questions can, can go to, to Ryan. So that's all for me. Thanks.